let's kick this off again, everyone. If you have specific questions, let's go ahead and get them in the Q&A box. I've got a couple of polls that I'm going to drop in here as we go along just, just to keep it interactive. But Matthew, I thought we'd kick it off. Uh, really, the first question that I was thinking about is like when somebody, when a property manager is thinking or considering maintenance, like how do they know when it's time and what are the main considerations? And I was just thinking, uh, you may come past, you may want to pass this off to Deb or whatever, but I was just thinking about you because when I knew you, when you started Evernest in 2008, you didn't have a, you didn't have any clients really for the most part, but you didn't have a maintenance department. And so I think you and I probably even used some of the same guys. We had John and Blake for a while. We would send to different properties to do handyman work. It took Everybody, them forever to do it too. Yeah, it took them forever. <laughs> if you ever met them out there, they would talk your head off. But what are the considerations that as a property management company is growing, like when do they need to think about, hey, could it be time for uh, a maintenance department? Or a handyman or whatever. Yeah. Look, many of you, if you heard our last podcast, you probably heard about this, but I I stumbled across maintenance. The whole idea was I was very focused on getting more control. Those of you who know me can't believe, probably can't believe that. But one of the challenges I was having was I had a bunch of third-party vendors, but none of them, I didn't have enough business and that that they were like willing to commit resources and and prioritize the things that were important to me. And so when I first stumbled across having my own maintenance business, it really was all about taking back control and giving my residents a good experience. And I felt like if that was outside of my control, and this is one of the things I've learned as I scale my business, anything that becomes outside of my control, a lot of times like third parties can't scale quite as fast as you can. And frankly, just don't have, you don't have the visibility into what's going on with that third party. And so you might think they're scaling and then all of a sudden you find out that they can't scale. And so when we brought maintenance in house, it was really all about uh, resident experience and me controlling, getting the major things done that needed to get done fast. And Deb, would you, yeah, I was going to ask Deb. Go ahead. Yeah. So I, yeah. So I'm going to say ditto to that because I think control is the first piece that you want to capture when you're doing this. So I started off in maintenance. I, that's where I started. And then I fell into property management. I had my own maintenance company and I started off doing renovations and flipping homes myself. But I think what people like to hear is the metric of when do I either bring in maintenance in house? either have a handyman, like Matthew said, or even start our own maintenance department or a company. I think when you get into the company piece, that opens up a lot more opportunities, but there is a lot more risk to that as well and, and more overhead. The, what we found was that when you get, it, it's not really how many doors you have. I really measure it on how much work you're doing. So work orders generating, how many work orders you're generating, how many turnovers you may have, because a property management company in Kansas City is going to operate very differently than one in Vermont or Washington State or even California. And they can have the same number and then Kansas City have a full a reason to have a full maintenance company. So it's usually between four to five work orders a day that consistently that you're dispatching for somebody to go out to. That's one handyman. That's how I that's how I gauged it. Because that was enough time for travel time having to go to Home Depot or Lowe's in the morning or the night before and coming into the office, getting everything. We had our own vans. So that was the other part of it as well. We got to that point where it just was a necessity, but that was, that's how we gauged that and structured it. And it, it worked really well for us. Do Frank, how do you, this, this great segue into like, when we open a new market, how are we thinking about standing up a maintenance department in the new market? How do we think about density and the number of homes we need, number of work orders? Yeah, on our end. Yeah, but... Was oh, that, go ahead. Was that me? Yeah, that, that was for Trey. Yeah, Deb really hit the nail on the head right there. It depends on the market. For example, a Birmingham market is going to look a lot different than a Nashville market. So we don't like to take into account door count. Why does it look different? Just the quality of homes, Birmingham quality of homes are rents are probably, I don't know, around maybe 1200 to 1400, whereas in Nashville, they're going to be upwards of 
uh, closer to 2000 or above. Just the quality of the home in Nashville is going to be higher than Birmingham. The lower the quality, the more work that's going to go into that, the more work orders that are going to be generated. And as far as moving into a new market, that's the main thing we're looking at. We're looking at work order count. And Deb was pretty spot on, roughly four to five work orders per day. If we're wanting a general handyman, then we know if we're hitting that threshold, then it's time to pull the trigger. So for us, we know over the course of a month, it's around, if we can get to the 65 work orders per, per month, we know that we're getting close. We need to go ahead and pull the trigger and hire a uh, general handyman. For any specialized trades like a plumber or HVAC, it's going to be a little under that. But again, we're looking at those work orders. And, then, and it's not including turnover. So I always separated regular service requests from turnovers are very different. When you get to, because your turnovers can be dependent, again, also on market, your class of property and everything. But if you get to a lot of turnovers, I have clients that have 30 plus turnovers a month because of door count size that changes the dynamics as well. And then so you may have maintenance coordinators that are just make ready coordinators that are working with project managers that are just focused on those turnovers and managing those timelines because not all, not two turnovers are the same. You're going to have a quick turn because the tenant maybe took care of the property relatively easy. And so you go in, you do your walkthrough and realize that it might just be a quick three-day turn. And then you can get that back on the market or get it rented out. And then you have a longer term just based off of maybe the size of the property, or it just requires a little bit more love. And then a trash property, which could take up to two weeks or longer. Mm -hmm.